to move on to the next speaker, Professor Eva Mrukwa Kominek, chairman in uh, the hospital in Katowice, the largest eye hospital in Poland, will tell us about her for exper first experiences with this lens. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to uh, share you our results with the first, really first results in Poland, uh, uh, trifocal IOL, uh, uh, sinusoidal, sinusoidal trifocal IOL, thanks to the company that we have the opportunity to implant these lenses, uh, because we know that the, the uh, lens history is uh, long, and we started with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, Spherical lens. Then we, uh, then the, when this uh, uh, Ridley uh, introduced the lens uh, as a first lens, then we moved to another possibility. To the many company create a new uh, type of lenses. We know that the surgical technique for presbyopia correction is are based on the three principal approaches. Uh, is, uh, first to achieve is monovision to create the acquisition and acquired anisometropia with one eye corrected to uh, distance vision and the other to near. The second approach is uh, to increase the functional ocular depth of focus uh, by creating a simultaneously, uh, simultaneous multifocality that achieve uh, satisfactory distance and near vision. And the third approach is uh, to surgically achieve uh, real changes in uh, accommodation or changes in ocular lens power. We have many lenses, uh, told now as a premium lenses. We uh, started with a regular multifocal lens, uh, as you know, many years ago, then, uh, then was the toric, toric multifocal, accommodative, polyfocal, and now the, is the era of trifocal lenses. And so uh, the uh, really ex um, excellent effect, effect after the cataract surgery uh, depends not only of the right qualification and the perfect surgery, but also the proper lens choice and the uh, good uh, implantation and perfect centration um, of the uh, lens. So uh, now we can switch to the Acriva Trinova. This is the revolution in the trifocal lens, as you, uh, as, um, as you uh, see the uh, previous uh, presentations. The uh, Acriva Trinova is uh, manufactured with uh, seamless vision technology. It's a unique diffraction pattern divided from sinusoid functions to provide the IOL optical surface which does not exhibit any sharp edges, as you see here. Um, it provides best optical performance in, uh, in trifocal IOL design. This is ideal uh, continuous vision. Is, uh, this ideal continuous vision is achieved as opposed to common traditional overlapping uh, diffraction pattern trifocal IOLs with sharp edges, as you see here. And uh, 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 this uh, lens gives uh, the patients better contrast sensitivity, dynamic visual performance, and reduce halos and glare. And um, also the aspheric optic and chromatic aberrations free uh, structure leading to enhanced depth of focus uh, provide continuous vision, hence spectacular independence at all distances. Um, so uh, as we uh, um, uh, know now that the 92% of effective light transmission to retina uh, is based on this lens, the excellent modulation transfer function at all distances. This is uh, the ability to an optical system to transfer contrast from the object to the image as a function of spatial frequencies. Uh, this lens uh, gives us also great prom performance in total focus area from the far uh, to near, near widest depth of focus and uh, uh, good vision in mesopic condition. Uh, we would like to evaluate the um, functional results and refractive results of the sinusoidal trifocal IOL implantation and degree of the patient satisfaction. Uh, the inclusion criteria is very uh, strong, but uh, uh, the, the follow-up examination up till now is uh, for the first uh, patient is three months because we implanted in uh, May the first lens, but uh, um, in all, all the patients are one uh, month. Uh, so um, uh, eight eyes with this uh, uh, implanted this uh, trifocal IOL in mean age uh, 67 years uh, to men for women 
the power of the IOL was between 17 till 23 uh, diopters. Uh, this was standard frequency emulsification with uh, uh, IOL implantation. You can see here how, um, how smooth and how easy is the implant this lens. This is uh, the lens uh, after the implantation are very stable. We can uh, also see how deep is the um, uh, focus. When we focus the microscope and we go with the pedal down and up, we see uh, very well this uh, this, um, uh, this shape of this lens. And uh, here you can see the changes in the visual acuity. Um, before surgery, the patients, uh, m most of the patients was um, uh, cataract patients, but, but also we have the presbyopic patient that the visual acuity are um, almost uh, uh, between 0.8 and 1. Uh, after one month, the uh, uncorrected intermediate vision um, improved uh, uh, next day after uh, surgery but really uh, is stable from the first months after, uh, after the procedure. So the uncorrected near visual acuity, this is in the Snellen, uh, Snellen um, uh, scale. So the O point is the best and uh, you can see the most of the patients have the uh, good visual acuity for near. So in the significant majority of patients, the maximum visual acuity was reached for distance, near and intermediate. Uh, no refractive surprise was noticed. No dislocation of the IOL were observed. The mean refractive error um, after the procedure was 0.3 plus minus 0.23. Uh, we also um, uh, evaluated the uh, visual function um, uh, VFI14, the uh, patient satisfaction question questionnaire. Um, this is a brief questionnaire. You know the 14 questions the patients uh, answered. Uh, if it's, uh, if it's uh, have uh, um, uh, have some uh, difficulty or uh, is uh, uh, extra uh, for this uh, task, so. Um, uh, you can see here the score before the surgery, uh, the mean, uh, the mean uh, points of uh, the VP14, the question, um, questionnaire uh, quality of life was 62. After one month after surgery was 84.5, but we know that the uh, visual function questionnaire is the best uh, six months after the procedure, so it will start next. Time. Uh, so you can see here the difference. This is uh, at this moment from the small group of patients is statistically significant. Um, no differences, no significant differences in the density of corneal endothelial cells before and after the surgery were observed. So no uh, differences in uh, intraocular pressure, no acute glaucoma postoperatively uh, observed. Uh, you can see here the uh, lens is really the shape of the lens uh, gives the possibility to implant in the back and uh, to be very stable. Um, so we can uh, conclude the small, uh, small uh, uh, couple of uh, patients with the highest light transmission, superior optical performance, comfortable reading distances, balanced light distribution, excellent post-op stability, easy to implant, great a patient satisfaction. This is the lens give the, the, the advantages in the patients. So the refractive results is no refractive surprise. Um, uh, we observe the post-operative refractive error is small and not statistically significant. In this uh, short observation time, we uh, can see, uh, tell that the refractive error seems to be stable and the lens gives patients more satisfaction. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. So in, in general, may I ask you about this uh, questionnaire that you have put? So you have approximately 85 out of Hundred, so we would say. Uh, yeah, it's general never satisfaction in, uh, yeah, level uh, would be 8.5 yeah. out of. Yeah, uh, but when you use the VP14 yeah. in the patients uh, um, in a shorter time after the procedure, uh, not only in this type of lenses, that, uh, shorter yeah. time than six months, you never get the hundred. Mm -hmm. This is uh, because the patients uh, used to be um, uh, to be. Uh, uh, friendly with the lens, friendly with the new uh, new optical um, new optical images uh, they see, and uh, I think that this is the reason that the patients uh, uh, have some uh, some uh, problem. But we reach in one patient in two uh, both eyes hundred after uh, three months. 
Yeah. Eva, maybe you discussed it, but I think that one of the advantages of this lens is color vision. Yeah. You have any, yeah. any hints by patients on color yeah, vision? This is true. Um, uh, we ask uh, the patients about uh, uh, many tasks, but uh, um, many of the patients told that the coral, color see are very sh uh, sharp. Uh, we have one patient who is uh, a cosmetologist and she told, is uh, quite young because 64 years old patient is quite young for uh, such a procedure and uh, she told me that uh, the color of the, uh, the painter of, uh, she used is uh, now in different, uh, in very, um, uh, very sharp uh, uh, so the color is, uh, this is also good, um, a good question because uh, we have sometimes the patients who are architect. This is also important, uh, the color should be, uh, should be nice. Okay, one question. Yeah. Uh, is this um, pupil dependent? No. No? No. Are you sure? Um, <laughs> until now, yes. Okay, and uh, what is the, you have limits in the pupil size for? Choosing the patients, you have limit, or, or no? Usually, when we measure the, the this is normal pupil between three and six uh, millimeters, so we we don't uh, we don't choose the patients because of the pupil. Uh, this was uh, chosen the patients who are um, ready to uh, to participate in the study for our regular waiting list. The patients who come to a hospital for regular cataract surgery, and we, we ask that we have the possibility to uh, implant the trifocal lens. Uh, this is the one group, and this was not uh, not uh, the, the, the pupil was normal. And the second part of the patients was the, the uh, as a university hospital, the patients know that we have some uh, possibility to uh, participate in the, in the trial or scientific work. So uh, it was also the patients who are not, uh, not uh, disqualified because of pupil. Just one more quick question. Yes, uh, this is a different question because we heard many things about performance of the lens, but nothing about PCO. What you have this question for doctor and for the others. What yeah. about PCO? I think, think we are too early because we, yeah, one <coughs> month, we all uh, have up to six early. months follow-up time and up six till months now, you no can't PCO. expect a lot of PCO. Yes, because I ask this because with a similar material from other companies, we get lots of PCO at two mm. years. Lots. I think that uh, well, Professor Gorzak can... I, I would like to comment on PCO. Traditionally, we have been taught that hydrophobic IOLs have less PCO than hydrophilic IOLs because of, of, of uh, fibronectin and because of closure of the capsule and stickiness of the capsule to the lens. However, uh, we have data on hydrophilic IOLs that depending on how it is being designed, this is what will show you how much PCO you get. So if you have a good posterior ring on the optic edge with a little bit of angulation, good closure of the capsule, there's no reason for having more PCO with hydrophilic IOLs. So it's not the material, but it's the design of the optic and the haptics. By the way, uh, one who um, uh, published a lot about this is Oliver Findel, and he has exactly the same findings as my group has. So. We, we cannot comment on how much PCO we have with this lens, but it's not only the material, it's specifically the design on how much you obliterate the posterior capsule. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have to go on. The last <coughs> talk will be by Dr. Jo Johan Blanke.